I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known in the garden beautiful hymn beautiful hymn i come to the garden alone alone for every one of us will give account of himself to God alone. I'm not going to be able to hold my wife's hand, nor is my wife going to be able to hold my hand. At the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to have to give an account for everything. Oh, and I'm very aware of this. How about you? How about you? Therefore, <laughs> I care very, very little for the opinions of men. And little boys care, I care very, very little for their opinions. Very little. Think you forgot to take your Ritalin yesterday, little boy. Just saying. My wife says to me, you know, Brad, have you, have you ever done one of your expository videos on Psalm 23? No, no, not that I'm aware of. And she's like, maybe you should. I don't know. So we pray about it. And I sat in here with our Lord and he just, just opened up the scriptures and showed me many things. So that is what we are going to do. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. It's easier for me to use two sets of scriptures. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We're going to have ourselves some expository here, and I'm just going to share with you uh, what the Lord shared with me. Uh, while we were looking at this and contemplating and just enjoying this very simple yet very profound psalm here. Six verses. Ain't much to it, right? 
But then again, you got to remember, our Lord really can compact a whole lot of meat and stuff in just a little package, you know? So with that said, let's get into this. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please follow me along in the scriptures as we read through this. Follow me along word by word, verse by verse, okay? Don't just sit there. This is not for your entertainment, okay? This is not for your entertainment. This is for your edification. It's for your instruction, okay? Psalm 23. Right away, you got to love how this starts out. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Like I constantly tell you, there is only one way, our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And there is only one way to go through that door, according to the way that he has prescribed. Broken of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow, uh, godly sorrow, you know, and fear of the Lord. See, being broken of your self-righteousness, having contrition, godly sorrow. Being broken will lead to true contrition, godly sorrow. And godly sorrow, knowing that it's your fault, the fear of the Lord, because he has every right to put you into hell. And when you come to him on those terms and in fear of the Lord, cry out to him. Ask him, Lord, save me. Lord, please forgive me. And may he save you. But see, how many other people want to follow a man? How many people want to follow their feelings? How many people want to save themselves by something that they do when there's only one way? See, the way of repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The only way, the one way, going through the door. You save yourself by your own belief. You think you're a good person. You put away X, Y, Z that he may give you A, B, C. You're a thief. You're a robber. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. You know, the God, the God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, knows everybody. He knows all people's names. Yes, he does. But he does not know everybody as through a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. Okay? You have a relationship with the living God. Okay? He knows all. He knows everybody. He knows who you are. He knows your name, yes. But he doesn't know everybody as through a personal relationship. Okay? He knows all your names, yes. But does he know your name because you have fellowship with him, a relationship with him? One that's dictated on his terms, not your own. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Our Lord says, I go to prepare a place for you. Okay? He has laid the groundwork for us. Okay? Very similar to the account in the book of Numbers, 
where the Lord says unto the children of Israel, okay, okay, see, there's the promised land. Go get it. I'm with you. I'll make it come to pass. I'm going to make it happen through you. But see, it's over there. Don't, don't sit there. Go, go get it. Okay? Very similar. He has, like, he has made the way for us. Okay? He has made the way for us. And he is preparing a place for us. Oh, hallelujah. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. A stranger. Have you ever run across somebody who you're listening to them? It's like, sounds pretty good, but there's just something off. Because they're a stranger. They don't know who the, our Lord is. They do, truly don't. They, they might have a head knowledge, but they don't have a personal relationship with him. See, a lost person can preach the true gospel. Absolutely he can. Why is that? Because the scriptures speak for themselves. Okay? But see, are they living by an example are what they preaching, teaching, and speaking, is it showing in their everyday lives? Hmm? You shall know them by their fruits. Okay, Many people can put a, a facade up, yes. Many people could do that. But like I always tell you, sooner or later, what do they do? <clears throat> they shoot themselves in the foot every single time because they can't keep up this facade forever. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Hmm. And verse 11 here in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and am known of mine. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, you lost people, you have a hole within you. Your soul is thirsty, hungering, crying out for something. And what do you do? You go to the world, you go to Satan, you go to Catholicism. For things to fill that void that is within you. Okay? And what do you fill it with? Uh, entertainment. Movies. Sports. Music. Video games. Drugs. Fornication. Whatever it is. But see, none of that satisfies you, does it? Because that hole that's in you. The only one who can pacify, satisfy that is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When you have God the Father, that seal until the day of redemption, that circumcision made without hands, dwelling within you. What? Why do you think Paul says, having food and rain, that let us be there with content? Because the creator of all of this dwells within you. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have within you God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit dwelling within you. The one who created all of this, who created you. What more can a man want? What more can you want? But see, Satan comes in, it's like, dangles a little carrot in front of you. So you lust and yearn after Worldly filth. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Now the God of peace. The God of peace. The Prince of Peace. Mm, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. 
Psalm 103. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> when you have the Lord dwelling within you, everything else falls short in comparison. How? I mean, how could it not? <laughs> you, you know, you're saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, how many people have a changed life but aren't a new creature? Yeah. Yeah. Not that I couldn't name a couple of you, right? But when you have the Lord within you, what more can you need? What? Wh how important is that praise from your hero? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, run along. Yeah. Psalm 103, verses 1 on to verse 6. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Holy, separate, other than. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What are these benefits? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. The only one who can forgive you of your sins, your iniquities, is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. Okay? He is the only one who can forgive you. Okay? Your forgiveness is bought and paid for, Church of the Living God. You know that. Because Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sins. And you trust on him. Him. Okay? Christ Jesus is the atonement for your sins. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Those who are whole need not the physician, but they that are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But sinners to repentance. Who healeth all thy diseases? You're not saved. You're sick in sin. You have a disease called sin. Not that you're going to, once he saves you, you're going to be sinlessly perfect. No, that doesn't happen like that, cousin. No, no. But see, that sickness in you, that disease, that hole, only our Lord can fill. He is the only one who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. You're not saved. Born again, a new creature in Christ Jesus of the church of the living God? You're a Christian, right? Right? Yeah? Your destiny is destruction. You're of this world, okay? You're not of the church of the living God, okay? You're not saved. What awaits you? Destruction. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. You are taken captive at Satan's will. Okay? He is the only one who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. See, that again, that is why going unto the Lord on his terms, broken of your self righteousness, that you may receive his lo loving kindness and his tender mercies. His salvation is just that, a tender mercy that is a gift to you, given to you by grace through faith. Okay? Verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Now hold, hold on. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, his gift of salvation for us today in this dispensation does what? Forgive all thine iniquities, okay? Who healeth all our diseases, okay? Now, this is not, you know, could he heal you of your cancer? Could he heal my wife of her cancer? Yes, he could. Could he heal you of your leukemia? Yes, he could. But more rather, the disease that is being mentioned here is that sickness of sin. Those who are whole, those who are self-righteous, have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, 
They know they're sick. They need the cure. Okay? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Those are the good things. And when you have that of the Lord given to you by grace through faith. Th this is just a little added extra. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 6. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And while we are here, Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Psalm 107, verses 1 under verse 9. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. The hand of the enemy, Satan, whom he hath redeemed, taken you out from Egypt, the world, from under Pharaoh, the headship of Satan, the little g-god of this world. Okay? When you come to the Lord on his terms, he take you out of that. You are no longer a child of disobedience, a child of wrath, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. From all over. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Yes, because we are sojourners. We have, this is not our home. Okay? This is not it. We seek another, a heavenly country. Okay? Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Now, some will argue, well, that's just physical trouble. Oh, okay, yeah. But to instruct us, you come unto the Lord with that hungry and thirsty soul of yours, famished. You come unto him on his terms, broken because of that disease that's in you that evil, that wickedness. You come unto him broken of yourself. Then they cried unto him in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. <laughs> oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 9, for he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. You lost people, that hole in you, that yearning, the only one who's going to fill that is our Lord Jesus Christ. You can, you can mask it over with all the adornments and the accoutrements of the world, all the traditions of men, and all the stuff you want to justify that is evil. The only only one who can satisfy you truly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay? Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 7 on to verse 9. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Mm -hmm. And delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Some of you might say, well, Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Uh, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men to serve one another in the fear of God. Uh, yeah, Paul preached the fear of the Lord. Paul lived the fear of the Lord. Everything that the Lord gave Paul to speak, 
unto the church, to the Jew first, and also to us Gentiles, okay? He's the apostle unto the Gentiles. But you look in the book of Acts, Paul did go to the Jew first, okay? Even though he is the apostle of the Gentile. But, okay, everything that Paul spake was based upon the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is wisdom, and apart from evil is understanding. And the New Testament tie-in in this, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And godliness with contentment is great gain. See, a lot of people say to you that through gain is godliness. And gain is not, like I've told you, it's not relegated to the do-re-mi, but to stuff the praises of men. They get pats on the head like a good little boy. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. <laughs> Amen. I know both how to be abased, humbled, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Why? And unfortunately, a verse that these Christians have trivialized, but nonetheless true, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Give me neither food, uh, what is it? Give me neither um, poverty nor riches. Give me food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, unless I steal and blaspheme the name of my Lord. I just bradized that big part. Okay? Christ dependent. Okay, look at that verse 12. I know both how to be abased, to be humbled, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Why? So you can't depend on yourself that you will not become self-sufficient, but Christ-dependent. Oh, how important is that? And how many right now today, right now, February the 9th, 1.22 p.m. How many of you are self-sufficient? And who is sufficient for these things? That's why I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Christ dependent. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. See, there are a lot of people by their own fleshly means, by uh, coercion, by manipulation, by, you know, getting their cheering section. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. we got to remember something, though. Psalm 127, verses 1 on to verse 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. If this counsel and work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of the Lord, you cannot overthrow it. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Well, brother, that was kind of childish. Uh, what do you think the enemies of our Lord and these Christians nowadays are? Children. Bunch of, look at the comment section, brethren. 
look in the comment sections at how childish these Christians are. Not all of them. Not all of them, though. But a majority of the a majority of them, they're acting like kids, children. Goo goo. Need to grow up. Proverbs chapter 3. We want verses 13 on to verse 24. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 13 on to verse 24. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the man that getteth understanding, departing from evil. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Yeah, remember, you were uh, those of us of the Church of the Living God, uh, we were redeemed by things far more precious than rubies, than anything this world has. What was that? By our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself, by the blood, okay? The blood, which is precious, okay? For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Wisdom is compared unto a beautiful woman. That treasure that we as the church of the living God have within ourselves, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that seal unto the day of redemption. Okay, that circumcision made without hands. Nothing. Nothing that Satan can offer you is ever worth it. Can, can't even minutely, minutely compare onto it. Onto what? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And his gift by grace through faith. Okay? For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst desire not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. When you know you're doing what the Lord has called you to do and you are walking according to the scriptures and between you and the Lord, things are good. What are these little kids? What are these little kids? Go run along. Go run along, frolic. Go run along. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes, Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Life unto thy soul. Grace unto thy neck. Hmm. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. When thou lie down, thy sleep shall be sweet, for he giveth, giveth his beloved rest. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Keep in mind with the boisterous winds that can get the waves going, keeping your eyes on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What is this? What is this? What, what, what is this, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget the Ridland there, little boy. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, this is addressing future fulfillment 
okay? One of uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and also the kingdom of heaven. But in context here, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Sooner or later, the Jewish people, the Hebrew, they're going to be led to the green uh, pastures. They're going to be led beside the still waters. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, capital B, shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And of course, verse 1 is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Only God, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, you moron, okay? <laughs> God was manifest in the flesh, okay? God in flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is the only one who could fully, perfectly keep the law. Only he could do that. Man at his best state could never do it, okay? And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Okay? Why? Because he made the law honorable, because he kept it perfectly. Okay? You gotta remember, when was Isaiah written and on to whom it was written? Huh? Okay? Let's continue. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Faithful is he who calleth you, and will do it. And he is righteous in all his ways. Amen. Alleluia. Now, future fulfillment to come, kingdom of heaven, and also denoting in eternity. Okay? The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters co cover the sea. Future Fulfillment coming within the kingdom of heaven, that thousand-year reign of Christ Jesus, and bleeding into eternity, okay? That's when the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the child will play on the hole of the asp, okay? Is that, is that here now? No, of course not. Of course not. Yes, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. John chapter 10. Go back to John chapter 10, Okay? John chapter 10, we want verses 7 on the verse 10. John chapter 10, verses 7 on the verse 10 now. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. There's only one way. Christ made an exclusive statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. A statement of exclusivity. Excluding all others. He is the only way. Verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Because it wasn't sanctified by the Father. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, chose the way of the cross. Remember, he is a God who chooses. Okay? He is a God who chooses. We are not the ones doing the choosing. He is the one who chooses the way. Okay? He chose the way. And when you are choosing your own way, like through your own belief, or you're a good person, or you put away XYZ to get ABC, yeah? 
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out, reference to the catching away, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal your hope, like I talked about in the other video, video and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Psalm 65. This, this is good. This is good. This is really good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 65. Psalm 65. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. And eventually, yes, all flesh. Every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. Whether it's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ, for those of us who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus of the church of the living God, or you lost people at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me, and as for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. And this isn't the Calvinistic choosing, okay? God, if you, you come to the Lord with a perfect heart, you know, a perfect heart is a broken heart, a heart that belongs unto the Lord, okay? You come to the Lord with a broken heart. <laughs> and, and that broken heart will cause godly sorrow in you. And in fear of him, you call upon his name, okay? And he, yes, it is an issue of your heart. And he is the one who saves you. You don't save yourself. It is by grace through faith, remember? Okay? Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. By terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer me, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are far off upon the sea, which by his strength setteth fast, setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their way of their waves, and the tumult of the people. What are we? Oh, the whole thing. Okay. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid at thy tokens. Oh yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, they are. You got these people. Prove to me your God exists. Hey, hey, come here. Proof is coming for you. You just wait. And by the time our Lord starts proving that he's real, it's going to be too late for a lot of you. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to rejoice. Thou visitest the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enrichest it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided it, provided for it. Excuse me. Yeah, you're, you're not going to eat unless the Lord allows you to eat. Okay? God can withhold the rain. He can withhold with ever. Okay? You don't have anything unless the Lord allows you to have it. Okay? Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. And thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness. And the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. Green pastures clothed with flocks, like a sheep. The valleys also are covered over with corn. 
They shout for joy. They also sing. Yes. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You, you know in Matthew chapter, what is that? Matthew chapter 14, where he fed the 5,000. And then in Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, he fed the 4,000. Okay, go to Mark chapter 8. Okay. He fed the 5,000 and the 4,000 with hardly anything, with a few loaves and a few fishies, okay? They were miraculously appearing to feed the people, okay? Mark chapter 8, okay? Mark chapter 8, we want verses 14 on to verse 21, okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Okay, now... For the kingdom of heaven, which he was offering on to the Jews, okay, he makes this statement in Mark, okay, Mark chapter 8, verses 14 on to verse 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Pharisee. What is a Pharisee? Catholic. Okay? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. Now, get a load of this. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? Having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? Look at this. When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full, baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him twelve. And when the seven, and when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, uh, and they said, seven. And he said unto them. How is it that ye do not understand? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What does this mean? He as king was miraculously going to provide for his people during the kingdom of heaven. And you got to remember, the kingdom of heaven comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. This earth is going to be devastated during the time of Jacob's trouble. And the kingdom of heaven is going to be a system of farming and stuff like that, okay? The earth is going to be renewed. The earth is going to be healed, okay? It's going to bring forth uh, seed and stuff like that, okay? But he miraculously, for the kingdom of heaven, will provide for his people. Why? Because he was there present. This does not mean that in this dispensation, you just sit there on your duff and expect the Lord to provide for you, okay? It doesn't work like that. Him as king, present, as king, presently provided supernaturally for his people, the Jews, okay? That's what that means, okay? That's when he says, how is it that ye do not understand? Him as king there present would presently provide for his people as king. He's not on the earth right now. God does provide for his own, yes, but he calls us to do something, okay? Whatever it is he has called you on to do, okay? Some he has called to this, others he has called on to certain other things, okay? We talked about this in the previous video, okay? But he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. This is Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. Okay, and Jesus is the son of David. David was the king, okay, making reference unto him being king unto the Jews and how he would miraculously provide for his people, the Jews, during this time when he was offering it unto the Jews, uh, when he was offering unto the Jews the kingdom of heaven. And when the king is on the earth during the kingdom of heaven, okay, we're going to be farming and what, uh, that kind of stuff, but he's going to bless the earth and it's going to bring forth abundance. You see? He, verse 3 in Psalm 23, He restoreth my soul. Amen. Alleluia. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness 
for his name's sake. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Big farm brethren, I'm getting there. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 15 on to verse 19. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 15 on to verse 19. Whose name is holy, other, separate. Okay? I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Oh boy, that, that, there's a lot of chutzpah. There is a lot of arrogance. You know, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. There's a lot of And guess what? Hi, I have a pride problem. I have a big pride problem. Okay? I, I struggle daily with pride. I have a thorn in the flesh to help me with that pride. Okay? But see, how many of us are truly contrite and humble in spirit? You tell me. To, re to revive the spirit Spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite, sorrowful ones. Okay? And what does God require of thee? That you walk, that you do justly and love mercy and walk humbly before your God. You come to the Lord in your self-righteousness thinking that he's got a catch with you. You know, it's like, oh, you got, you got, you got something big here when you got me there, Lord. No vestige when you come to the Lord on his terms. No vestige of that self-righteousness can be there when it comes to asking him to save you. Our soul and spirit are housed within the skin suit. I, we've talked about this in length. We are going to sin, okay? We're not going to get away from that. We, because our soul and spirit are housed within this flesh, the skin suit, the spirit lusteth against the flesh, and these two are contrary, okay? And sin has been relegated to where? The flesh, okay? The flesh lusteth against the spirit, okay? So we are to be Christ-dependent, to both abound and to be abased. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite, sorrowful, and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Neither will I always be wroth. Why? For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. See, you lost people, that's something you got to understand. Okay? God made you, whether you want to accept that or not. Okay? You don't belong to him as via a relationship. No. But he made you. You are his creation. Okay? And his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. Okay? And if anyone has a right to be indignant, wouldn't it be our Lord? Who are you? Who are you, by the way, anyway? <laughs> Praise the Lord that he's not going to be angry forever. Wrath. Okay? Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is seven years. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
for the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth. Ah, and what does God think about the covetous? And smote him, I hid me, and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your covetousness. And you're going on forward, and you're forwardly in your own heart. Look at that verse. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways. I will heal him. I will leave him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. Verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace. Peace to him that is, that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord. And I will heal him. Let's read to the end of the chapter. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ezekiel. He restoreth my soul. Ezekiel chapter 37. The valley of dry bones. Ezekiel chapter 37 talking about Israel. He restoreth my soul. Israel has been restored as a nation right now. Yes, they have. <laughs> Look what's going on in Israel right now. Remember, Israel is the temper temperature gauge. Okay? Look at what's going on there now. Israel is a nation right now as we speak. Okay? But are they a nation that honors the Lord? Hmm. What has to happen? For Israel. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 5 on to verse 14. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Does Israel right now know that he is the Lord? No, because they're full of dead men's bones right now as we speak. They're whited sepulchers. On the outside, you look so pious and righteous. Yeah. But on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Oh, we, we can make the reference and tie in to Genesis chapter 3, or Genesis chapter 2 in that as well. Oh, definitely can. There are so many tie-ins, but we're going to leave that one alone. You can look that up on your own time. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind. Uh, remember when our Lord said to the wind, Peace, be still. It's interesting because a, a good friend of mine and I were able to speak together this morning. And of course, like always, the Lord led and guided and gave us some stuff. I was just thinking about that. You know, a lot of wind right now, right? Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. 
Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, once they figure it out, uh, yeah, that's just like, wow, all hope is lost. You know, that's why they're going to have to endure to the end to be saved, okay? Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Now, they're already in the land of Israel, okay? But see, they are not following the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Their Mashiach, their King, okay? And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves... He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. Okay? God hath not cast away his people. Okay? Beware of replacement theology. Okay? And he shall put and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. Seth, the Lord. It's real right now today. They're not following the, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, their King, their Messiah. No, they are a nation because it was promised in the very book of Ezekiel. Future fulfillment. Our instruction in righteousness he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Call upon the name of the Lord and he will restore your soul. If you come unto him broken and contrite and in fear of him, call upon the name of the Lord, obviously. You know, there is a condition to your salvation, dear friend. Don't let these devils fool you. Okay? And now go to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Also, this is a miktam of David. Okay? Also, a, as they say, a messianic psalm. Preserve me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. What is your goodness? It's a, it's a menstrual cloth. It's filthy rags. That's what's de being denoted in Isaiah. A menstrual cloth, okay? What, what's the what's this goodness that you are going to offer the Lord, huh? Huh? Boy, you know, smack some of these people on the back of their heads. They think that they're offering their goodness unto the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings and blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Look at that. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Who is your little G God? What in your life? Is taking the place of God. Oh, nothing. Yeah, really? Explain to me what's going on today within the body of Christ. Oh, we're in the falling away. We're in the falling away, yeah. A lot are going out from us. And they were never of us. They were never of us. They were just mimicking that guy from Florida, their Messiah, and following him. 
or following another guy who's taken his liking. Yeah? Who, who has taken the place of God for you? What is getting in the way? Uh, be careful, dear friend. Please be careful. Because remember, our God is a jealous God. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set I have set the Lord always before me, unless it is when it's to satisfy my own lusts and my own needs. When there's something I want to do. No, no, no. I have set the Lord always before me. Have you done that? Are you doing that? Now, granted, no one can do that perfectly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's a just man falleth seven times and getteth up again. But the wicked, they will fall into mischief. Okay? I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. <laughs> you think you're going to move me, huh? You think you're going to move me? I know who I serve, and I know who have saved me. Why don't you take a look in the mirror there, little boy? Oh, I'm sure you spend a lot of time in the mirror looking at your pretty little self, don't you? Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Uh, verse 10 here is talking about, uh, this is a messianic, as they say. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Uh, Christ's body never saw corruption. It was that three days. Because remember, by the fourth day, when they went into the tomb of Lazarus, but it's been four days, and now he stinketh. There's science for you, okay? After third, after the third day, going into the fourth day is when decomposition like that and the body starts to stink after on the fourth day. Science for you in Scripture, okay? Verse 11. Thou wilt chew me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Uh now, Psalm 25, Psalm 25, he restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 25, verses 1 unto verse 11, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. <laughs> yea let none that wait on thee be ashamed amen alleluia let them be ashamed which transgress without cause shew me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake Lead me in thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Yes, yeah, so and one of the things that devils like to do, um, they like to keep you held down in the past. We've talked about this before at length. 
uh, the enemies will want you to stay back here when the scriptures say, forgetting those things that be behind, I set forward. <laughs> I move forward. Get on with things. No, but what are these devils, especially these coadjutors and these false brethren, what do they like to do? They, they like to bring you back here, don't you? Don't you? Don't fall for it, brethren. Uh, what? Do you not know that your sins have been forgiven for his namesake? Past, present, and future? That doesn't mean you live flippantly. But of course not. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. And the meek will inherit the earth eventually. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Dispensational difference here. Okay, let's continue though. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. And I am a sinner who is chief. I know a lot of, and, and see, that's, that's the beauty of it. That's, that's the beauty of it. The brethren whom I talk to and have fellowship with, they say, you know, Brad, like, like yesterday, talking to a dear beloved friend and brother of ours, it's like, you know, Brad, you keep saying that you're a sinner of, who is chief. It's like, yeah, I am. And he's like, I beg to differ. My best friend, our best friend, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I beg to differ. Our dearly, dearly beloved. Uh, she's like, no, I, I beg to differ. See, that's right. And that's not a thing of competition. That's not a thing of competition. I'm the worst of sinners. And see, unless you come to the Lord knowing that you are the worst of the worst. <laughs> yeah, and the New Testament tie-in, of course, familiar verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Of course, we had to come here. This was kind of like one of those things, okay? Now, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23, Psalm of David, okay? Dispensationally, doctrinally, there are differences. The New Testament tie-in, okay? Verse 17 under verse 21 in verse 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Many people, many people can have a changed life. How many people are new creatures? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And we are all in the ministry of reconciliation. There are some uh, who have, because of what they do, they are up here and they're, they're above everybody else. Okay? All right? But we, who are of the church of the living God, contrite and humble, okay, we are the ones. We are the ones. We have the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. What he forgives, he also forgets. The, no, the world doesn't. Some of these brethren won't either. But the Lord does. The Lord does. Okay. That don't mean that you won't suffer the consequences of these actions of yours, of sins of the past. Hi. But what he forgives, he forgets. Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, 
Be ye reconciled to God. Ambassadors for Christ. And how many of you are acting like little children? Little children. You're acting and behaving like school kids. Little boys, little girls acting like little kids at a schoolyard. Yeah, it's disgusting, right? It sure is. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who, know, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. Be made the righteousness of God in him. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Famous. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I have heard before, and um, it was brought up to me lately, that the valley of the shadow of death is actually a real place. Now, there are several places that are referred to that. There's this one place in like 1855, war zone or something like that. But also there's this place that's in, what was it, northern, like a causeway, the something, wadi something. But, you know, that is neither here nor there. But there is talk that the valley of the shadow of death is also an actual literal place. But, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Yeah, and I die daily. <laughs> I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. What, what, what are we... What, you think I'm afraid of you? <laughs> think I'm afraid of you, huh? <laughs> Uh, no, I fear the Lord. <laughs> yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art myth with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 56. I was able to share this with a brother to this morning. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. Yeah. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. Yeah, because I never really was part of a certain clique. Nor did I ever want to be. Look at how they are. Think I want to be part of that? Oh, and you, uh, D-E, in the comments section. You, you keep being the little cheerleader that you are. Yeah. Yeah. What time I am afraid. I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. <laughs> right here. And, and, and two, these, 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 these people are doing exactly this. You're resting my words. And thank you unto the one apparently who I irritate. Love you. But yet, still pointing out the facts. These people are wrestling, wrestling or resting words to suit their own agenda. That, that, that's what my friend over in England does. And they're doing the same thing. That's weird. That's really weird. That's really weird. Yeah. 
Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Oh, oh, how are people marking people's steps today? Okay, straining at gnats. Uh, oh, he said this. Oh, he said this. Oh, he said... Just shut up. Put your head in the toilet. Flush it a couple times. Cool off. Okay? Grow up a little there. Okay? But th this, this is what... A lot of this is happening right now. <laughs> Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves, right? They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. These people, it's like, aha, aha. I knew of a, maybe a brother, uh, maybe, don't know anymore, um, who was like that. Always looking for the, aha, aha. Even right now, today, for uh, doing this, uh, people are looking for the, aha, oh, aha. Go away. Go away. Okay? Got enough. Got enough to deal with. Don't need you people coming around looking. Aha! Oh, aha! He said, oh, aha! And of course, it's vanity to say that because, you know, that's what these people do. You know? We're warned. And see, what do we do? You, you say born again, converted, and a new creature in Christ Jesus? What is there to be afraid of? He giveth his beloved sleep. Okay? Shall they escape my iniquity in thine anger? Cast down the people, O God. Seriously? What do you, you know, what do you think our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, thinks of what is called Christendom today. Note the word dumb on the end of that. What do you think he thinks of all this? Hmm. Yeah. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know. For God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light? Of the living. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, Psalm 118. Psalm 118. My wife's favorite psalm. Psalm 118. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Amen. His mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Lots of room. The Lord is on my side. Oh, you hate that. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is on my side. He has, he has proven that to me and to us, even to you who hate me. He has proven that time and time again. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. 
Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You know, like a hero. Yeah. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in the heir apparent princes. Yeah. 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 Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 28. <laughs> Some of you really need to take this instruction to your heart. You really do. Because if there are some people out there who have a, a God complex, whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Yeah, boy! Yeah! Yeah! Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay? Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and verse 28. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Yeah. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and not the master himself. And the servant as his Lord. If they, have, if they called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. They went out from us, but they were not all of us. But they went out from us that they might be revealed that they were not all of us. Yes. Yes, fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. And hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in, the dar in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, like Jesuits, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And of course, verse 28, we'll talk about these people who believe in soul annihilationism. Say, well, see, he, he will destroy your soul and body in hell. It says, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Not that your soul will not be destroyed in hell. You're going to be burning forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Okay? The, yeah, this is a verse that those who believe, like Bullinger, uh, excuse me, like Bullinger, um, who believed in soul annihilationism. <laughs> yeah, this is a go-to verse for them. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Another thing that we of the Church of the Living God have to keep in our mind. Romans chapter 8, verses 31, unto the close of the chapter. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. God's elect. God elected the way of the cross. The elect in context there is those who are of the church and living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile. Okay? Talked about that in the video about Calvinism. Okay? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Of course, we had this. This was like uh, this was one of those things that's like, oh, well, right away. We've covered this one before, but who who are you trusting? Who are you dependent on? First Corinthians chapter one, okay, verses three under verse eleven. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. Are you trusting in yourself? You say you're trusting on God, yeah? Yeah? Really? Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, pray for one another, amen, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Okay? Okay. And Proverbs chapter 3, see how we did that? Proverbs chapter 3, that's Psalm 119, beautiful psalm. Yes, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. My son, despise not the, despise not the chastening, of, chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If you're not getting correction or chastisement from the Lord, who are you getting it from? Hmm? Yeah, Hebrews, of course, of course, of course. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, not Revelation, Brad. Pick your part, brother. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 on to verse 11. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, which we just looked at, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son whom receives him, whom he receiveth. Uh -huh. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. <laughs> if the shoe fits. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we give them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection under the Father of spirits and live? 
For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastising for the present seemeth joyous, but grievous, nevertheless afterward. It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Of course, Revelation 3.19. Had, had to throw this in here. Revelation 3.19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Go back to Psalms. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Verses 11 on to verse 14. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Amen. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. <laughs> Keep digging, buddy. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. And of course, he's talking about the Jews there, but this is a little instruction in righteousness. Okay? Remember, we still need that. Okay? And Psalm 119, Psalm 119, Teth, Psalm 119, Teth. Well, you don't know what that is. Psalm 119, T-E-T-H. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. The proud have forged a lie against me. You're lying. You're saying things I said that I never said. You're a liar. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Yeah, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Ah, yeah. Preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Psalm... 37, Psalm 37, verses 22 on verse 29. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly Cast down. Why? Because a just man falleth seven times, riseth up again. Okay? For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, especially self-governance, self-judgment. You know, you judge yourself how? Through the scriptures, okay? For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. 
They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Amen. Alleluia. And Psalm 86. Psalm 86. Psalm 86. We want verses 12 on to the close of the chapter. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Psalm 86, verses 12 on to verse 17. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. But thou, o Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. Shew me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, hast hope in me and comforted me. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Nehemiah. 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 Chapter 6. <laughs> you, you want a good chapter in scripture which talks about um, mind control and psychological manipulation and psychological tactics that are being employed today by Jesuits and these coadjutors and these false brethren. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 6 is a really good chapter for you. But Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 16. <laughs> My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat, According to these their works, and on the prophetess, Nodiah. <laughs> and the rest of the prophets, that would have put me in fear. Yeah. So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month, Elio, in 50 and 2 days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things. They were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. If this thing be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you ain't going to stop it. It's that simple. It's that simple. If God is behind it, it's going to succeed. You can mess it up. Yes, you can. But ultimately, it will succeed. Why? Because you bear his name. You bear his name. Why? Because he dwells within you. Christ within you. The hope of glory. Okay? You bear Christ within you. Jesus Christ is in you. This counsel or thing will be of men, it will come to naught. Not, excuse me. But if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. And oh, you will try. You get an A <laughs> for effort, uh, absolutely. And go to Philippians, a New Testament tie in. Philippians chapter 4 again. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 18 on to 20. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received the Pephaphardus, the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. And thank you to you, brethren, who still support us and help us and pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. But my God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, whom I serve, 
But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And, and, and Psalm 22, Psalm 22, we want verses 25 on to verse 29. Okay. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Psalm 22, verses 25 on to verse 29. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear thee. I will pay my vows before them that fear thee. Uh, I just lost my place. Okay. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. None can keep alive his own soul. You remember that, right? Right? I hope you do. <laughs> I hope you do. Okay. Uh, Isaiah chapter 25 again. Isaiah chapter, oh, not again. Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah chapter 25. Come on, fingers. There we go. Isaiah chapter 25. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 8. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city and heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat in a dry place, as the heat of a, in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain, Shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in his mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. Uh, there's a reference about where the veil is taken off in the reading of the New Testament. You can make a reference with that, okay? Verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord will wipe away tears from off all eye faces. Excuse me, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. For the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And of course, go to First John chapter two. First John chapter two. First John chapter two verses twenty six under verse twenty nine. These oh let's see here let's thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over. Anointest your head with oil. These things have I written, uh, 1 John 2, verses 26 on to the close of the chapter. 
These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And that anointing is a reference unto the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, here, uh, verse 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things, and it's called the anointing. That's reference unto the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that is within us who are truly saved. Okay, that's what that is we ta uh, talking about, okay? But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and be not ashamed before him at his coming. For if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Why? Because it's not you doing the works. Born of him. Born again. See? Okay. And of course, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're almost done. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 21. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that, ye would, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, the hidden man of the heart, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth all which passeth knowledge to, uh, excuse me, and to know the love of Christ with which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church of, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. World without end. Amen. And that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, you know, I don't ask people. I ask the Lord, and the Lord answers. And it is amazing just how the Lord has done exactly that in our lives that we can testify. And verse 6 of Psalm 23. Let's read verse 5 again. Thou preparest, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Now here's where we're going to do a little reading here. Psalm 89. Psalm 89, we want verses 15 on to verse 33. Blessed is the people that know, that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? I have found David my servant, 
With my holy oil have I anointed him. Again, reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews, son of David. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness, son of perdition, uh, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. Again, reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ as King of the Jews. Okay. Now here's where it gets interesting. Verse 28 on to verse 33. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. We're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And the seed of Abraham, be sure to link that in the description box of this video because it's going to touch on this, okay? Did a two-part video on the seed of Abraham. Check that out. It will be in the description box. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. His seed, our Lord Jesus Christ talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, his seed. How do you know that? And his throne as the days of heaven. Okay. His seed will I also, well, his seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven, which has no end. Okay. Reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, his seed. Okay. And as far as Abraham's seed, okay. Abraham's seed. Okay. Those of uh, uh, faith, of faith are counted for Abraham's seed, okay? Like I said, I'll link the Abraham seed videos in this in the description box, okay? His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with stripes, Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. And that's giving credence unto, of course, the remnant that will be saved. While he punished Israel severely, you know, with Babylon and also the Holocaust and the coming Holocaust, there's always a remnant, okay? He did not take away his kindness from Israel permanently, forever. God hath not cast away his people, okay? Okay. Like I said, I'll leave the Abraham Seed videos in this in the description box. Okay. And of course, now New Testament tie-in. Okay. And remember, we were grafted in as Gentiles were grafted in to the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. Okay. Ephesians chapter one verses eleven on to verse fourteen. Okay. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Again, this is not the, pre, uh, the predestination of Calvinism. I'll link, the description, uh, link it in the description box if you have any questions. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ within this dispensation. Okay? In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. And, of course, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We want verses 11 on to verse 17. Now, if they, if they transgress my law, I will visit them with the rod. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay? Today in this dispensation... 
when the Lord saves you, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You're going to go home to be with the Lord. Once saved, always saved, okay? It's not your salvation to lose, okay? But what can happen is you can lose a lot of other things. You won't lose your salvation, but there are a lot of other things you can lose. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 17. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man built upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That's not purgatory. Our works are going to be tried at the judgment seat of Christ to determine our rewards, okay? And then this is very simple. Gold, silver, precious stones will go through fire. Wood, hay, stubble, go up like a puff, okay? If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, built upon Christ, okay, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, meaning work that you did yourself, that weren't was a work that you're doing that isn't based off of the foundation. Yeah, okay? If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, including yourself, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is wholly set apart. Why? Which temple ye are because God dwells within you. Your flesh isn't holy, but you are set apart because God dwells within you. See? Okay? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11 on to verse 13. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to this world, dead to ourselves, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, because anyone who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will also, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Okay? You know where it says, if we deny him, he will deny us? It's not talking about salvation, blessings, promises, you know, mercy, that kind of stuff. But salvation, right there. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. And here's where we're going to finish it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 9. And then we will be done. Then we will be done. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Remember, wisdom is defined by the context in which it appears, okay? Remember that. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Determine who is saved. Who is saved among you? And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, like John MacArthur, okay? But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, perfect in heart, not sinlessly perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of, princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained for the world unto our glory, 
which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And how can you truly love our Lord Jesus Christ unless you are broken, contrite, sinner who is chief, who in fear of the Lord called upon him, called upon the name of the Lord and he saved you. You know, we have much to be thankful for, brethren. We really do. And we need to remember to praise our Lord. we got to remember, there are a lot of people at this time who, you know, were in the falling away. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They kept up the show for quite a while. But under duress, after receiving many blessings, things going straight to their head. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And the gospel that I am to preach unto you is the gospel that's founded in the scriptures. You can go pound sand. Okay? Actually, do it with your head a couple hundred times. Okay? Go ahead. But the gospel that I have presented unto you and will present unto you is the gospel that is found in scripture for us today in this dispensation, the very same gospel that our Lord saved me by. Okay? From henceforth, from henceforth, unfortunately, I think the circle of people whom I have trusted are going to start getting really slim. Uh, there are obviously, um, like my dear friends, but there are a few out there that say, man, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But see, none of these things move me. This is what the Lord has called me to do. And unless the Lord be the one, I'm going to continue to serve you, Church of the Living God. And you can be looking for all your little, aha, aha. Go away. Go away. Go away. Ain't got time for you. I definitely got ain't got time for you because oh boy did my email go off like a bomb exploded yesterday. It's like what? What is oh really? Really? <laughs> yes, and, and people please don't I I'm I'm aware of all this nonsense. I'm aware. I'm aware of these liars. Okay? I'm aware. I'm aware. Let, let them play their little schoolyard games. Let them do what they're going to do. Let them do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have yourself a good time. Yeah. Live it up there, guys. Go right ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. With your little bearded cheerleaders following you everywhere going, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. 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 Fine, kaput. Going on to the next one. Because there's going to be a next one, brethren. You watch. Like I've told you. This is what's going to happen this year especially. We are going to see people who we thought were. Prove themselves that they ain't. Because they love the praises of men. 
more than the praises of God. And what God are you serving? I wonder. So, anyway, brethren, I, that little statement I had to say that uh, because I'm I'm <laughs> who are you? I'm not I, I'm not even gonna I'm not, I'm, I, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with those people. I'm done with all this stuff like that. Okay. The Lord has given to us things to do. Got enough on my plate myself personally. Okay. Uh, a whole lot of you still contacting and whatnot and stuff like that. You know, ain't got time for these people. Ain't got time for them. Ain't got time for them. They're a bigger fish to fry right now. And I'm going to go get me the batter. So, Anyway, I hope this video has helped some of you. I hope um, I hope some of you got some encouragement from reading that psalm. Like I said, thank my wife, your sister. She was the one who brought that up. And uh, praise the Lord that she did. And um, I don't know when the next video will be. I would like to have another week uh, video before the weekend. But that's not up to me. See, that's up to the Lord, whom I serve. So, I love you, brethren. I love you. Thank you to those of you who pray for us. Thank you to all of you, and you know who you are, who help us. Thank you, brethren. Thank you. We love you. We cherish your prayers, and we pray for so many of you. And uh, those of you who are going to go away, don't let the door hit you on the behind on the way out. Okay? Okay? We love you. We'll see you in the next video.